What do you think you're smiling at? I, I thought you were somebody else. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I can what your game is. I, I don't have a game. What do you, what do you want? And that was me thinking that you wanted something for me. I, I, I misread the situation. I'm, I'm sorry. Get down on your knees. hands behind your back. Now, tell me about this situation you misread. Um, I looked at you because I, 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 I thought I knew you. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Open your mouth. What? I said... I don't have time for foreplay. Just get on with it. One. Just like that guy. Two. Nice and hard. Okay. Oh. <sighs> Good morning. <sighs> How very rude of me. I should know better. Trust me. First impressions can last a lifetime. I'm Dale. I'm 28. I love movies, candlelit dinners, socialising and reading. Bollocks, do I? I'm not writing an ad for the Lonely Hearts here. Sex. I like sex. Lots of it. Sex with strangers, watching strangers have sex, watching sex performed in strange ways. God. Notice how the words sex and strange keep appearing. Everything is love. Love is everything. Everything is love. Love is everything.
you doing? Good. How are you doing? Good. Good. So, so important you Muppets want to meet. It's early, you know I'm a night owl. Care to join us for lunch, Dale? No. Wouldn't mind a bottle of water, though. Water, please. So come on, what's the crack? Well, Raj has something to ask you. Well, then maybe Raj should ask me. Thanks. I wanted you to be the first to know. The second? Actually, guys, I'm no mathematician, but aren't I the third? Well, Vina has agreed to be my wife. And we are getting married this summer. Right. Well, that's news, isn't it? Someone had to take him off my hands, I guess. <laughs> but but I, I'd love it if you'd be my best man. Best man? I'm your only man. Come here, you fool. You okay? Uh, guys, I'm getting married too. <laughs> of course you are. So when's the wedding going to be then? Soon. Vina's got Soon. the personality Everyone's of a cream cracker. Soon, they'll be like every other pram-pushing married couple. Early nights, staying in, watching Britain's Got Talent and The X Factor. Ooh, the little thrill-seekers they are. She'll get them playing house next, then it's couples only for dinner. She's a nice girl, but is nice enough. I hope so. Or do I? Well, would love to chat, but I've got work to do. Oh dear. Everything okay, sir? Am I expecting company this afternoon? No, sir. Just the two of us. Oh. You're eating with me? Who's serving me my meal? I want exceptional service this afternoon. All right. OK, sir. I guess I should be cutting back on my food anyhow. <laughs> sir, for your appetizer, you'll have salmon and lemon and dill sauce. For your main, you'll have lamb shank, rosemary mashed potatoes, Honey glazed parsnips and baby sweet corn, lightly buttered and peppered, just the way you like it. Dessert? Why, your favourite? Creme brulee with crushed raspberry compote. Would you like a glass of wine, sir? Yes, I would. A glass of your best dry white. Okay, sir, I shall be right back. And wash your hands before you serve me. I don't want your filthy germs on my food! You can now see why I turned down Vina's kind offer of joining them for lunch. Why pay to eat when you can get this kind of service and get paid? My fee is 150 an hour plus travel. So when I visit Pete, I'm always extra careful not to rush me food. I endorse fantasies. I take people to places that they usually only ever go to alone. This takes skill, patience and instinct. You're probably thinking, I like the sound of my own voice and I'm a bit up my own ass. Well, we're all allowed to think. That's one thing I can't charge you for. 
reception. It's men's pieces, and if you're getting married, guys, your wedding, your gay wedding could be the very, very best anyone's ever seen. It's all about the ring. I've got yellow gold, I've got white gold, I've got platinum and sterling silver, something for everyone's taste and everyone's budget at the lowest prices. You're gonna look great, but it's not gonna cost the world. If you're interested, pick up the phone, dial the number, come through and join me and grab yourself a piece I know you will love. So Dale, what have you got to lose? Imagine that feeling you'll have when Raj slides into your ring. Gorgeous pieces, lowest prices, the most amazing feeling you will have wearing something that holds you and your partner together oh, no. forever. This is your chance to get an exclusive Not again. item at a price I know that you won't I told you, if I have to clean that up, you'll pay me double. That you and your partner you bad boy! And have forever. I love the design, you will as well. If you don't, you can send it back to us. You've got your... I met Sean a couple of years ago in Australia. He was there finishing his art degree. His work then was political, abstract and often crude. He used to paint on canvas. Now he just paints on himself. He's a popular drag artist under the name of Estée Applauder. Everyone knows who she is, so you can imagine Sean is very beneficial as a friend. Jesus, where'd you get this? Eduardo took a shine to one of my paintings. Which one? The one with the man pulling his ass cheeks apart. I thought you liked that. I got bored of it. You've got to know when to move on, Dale. You'll be moving right into rehab if you keep bartering your art for drugs. Well, I could sell my ass. <laughs> You've got to have one first, Sean. Oh! Well, tonight I'm going to work my little ass off. And you, my darling, are going to film it. Oh, God. I want to preserve my youth. You never know when your number's up. I want to leave behind all of my achievements. you got your drag show, haven't you? I'm not drag. I'm art. <laughs> Crawling out his ass. Worms. More like tiny white maggots, really. You know, I've been waiting to bite into his peach for three flippin' months. And just as I get my face right up close, I see him. Lucky I had the lights on. So where did you end up? Sauna. Oh, the sauna. Oh, Dale, you'll pick up all sorts there. Well, that's the point, Sean. Anyway, you can hardly talk. Well, somehow in Sean's wit, he's hit the nail on the head. At least in regard to how I feel. I'm between two places in my life at the moment, feeling restless. 
One part of me loves where the spontaneity is taking me, cruising through life with no plans. The freedom you feel and the situations you encounter can be amazing. Then there's the other part of me, approaching 30. Others at this point have stability, a career, someone to make plans with and depend upon. I'm not afraid of relationships, but I won't settle with someone who doesn't tick all my boxes. You see it everywhere. Men who go from one relationship to another, people who stay with someone even though they know it's not right. Sometimes spouses cheat on each other, have affairs. You'd be surprised if you knew how many married men hire me. Some, adamant, they're not gay. They're the ones I give a really good seeing to, just to remind them. They soon come back. In fact, they make up half of my regulars. My new client, Andy, is a voyeur. But I reckon if you're parting with cash, get involved and get your money's worth. This one likes a bit of slap and then again, I don't mind not sharing Ricardo. <laughs> Call him a dirty homo. You like this, a dirty homo? Yeah. Pull his hair and ride him hard. Hard, I want to see his eyes water. Now spit on his face and tell him he's a dirty little whore. A dirty little whore. Yeah. Yeah. Squeeze his throat. Go on, make the horse suffer. Well, that was easy 500. Easy for you, maybe. I put in all the effort. You should have something to work with. So what's going on with work? Oh yeah, the phone never stops. I'm saving every penny for drum school. Right. Be a good actor. It's nice. Who gave you that? Sugar daddy, was it? No, Dale. It's a gift from my father. It's one of a kind. She wish me luck in London. He has a big dream for me. Did you take that bottle of vodka out of the medicine cupboards? No, Mum. I never touch your medicine. Well, I'm sure I never started that bottle. Is it? Yeah, the empty bottle's in with the rubbish. Look, if I find out you drank it, I'll be taking no more of your special parcels when you're out. Do you hear me?
Dale coming round later? No. I'm meeting him at the pub. He's a good friend of yours. He's always welcome here. What are you after? Nothing, son. But if you are going past the off-licence in the next hour, you couldn't get me a little bottle of vodka. Well, can you help me out? Of course I can. Which way did you come in? Hey, what? Oh, stop messing with my head. I'm not messing with your head. It's the vodka that's messing with your head. Can't you just have one day off? Don't make me feel bad. It helps me take the edge off how twisted and cruel the world around me is. Not this chat again. All I wanted was a normal life. Children who do childish things like spoil their mother. No, no, not me. I'll get Mrs Doubtfire. Should never have bought you that bloody video. I was clearly paving the way, saying it's normal to play with clothes the way you do. Thanks, Christine. You know, I'd do nothing but worry about you. Don't think that everyone's all right with what you do. It pulls families apart. I was only on the news just now that one of your lot got murdered up on the heath. That's sick. Yeah. Maybe. But sometimes I understand why they act that way. Unbelievable. I only cope because I've got Mr V down the road. And for twelve ninety nine a bottle, he makes you much more tolerable. So don't you dare deny me that. How did you become such an utter bitch, Christine? Down to the parenting. So well done, Priscilla. You can take the credit for that too. <laughs> did you ever stop to think when I was raising you... Who was looking after me? Don't blame me for your father dying. Didn't just leave you. Left both of us. I blame him for you turning out this way. Stop bad-mouthing him. I know you needed a manly figure in your life, but guess what? So did I. I was hoping that spending that time in Sydney would have straightened you out. If you met Sydney, you wouldn't say that. <laughs> Stop thinking you're so smart. I just never expected you to return as damned as daughter. I don't know what you mean, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you knackered? I've been working on Ricardo all morning, haven't I? <laughs> Maybe you should be working on the speech. Oh, you know me. I'll come up with something. You think I'm a feat? See, that's what I'm afraid of. If I know you, you'll be up there talking about yourself and forget all about the wedding. So, Raj, are you really in love with... Well, is she... The one? <laughs> Dale, all I know is that she makes me feel good about myself. Well, I make you feel good about yourself. It's got to be more than that. Do you love her? <laughs> well, to be honest, the whole thing scares the hell out of me. She needs this. I need this. Surely the fact you're scared tells you something. Look, mate. You are someone who deserves to feel happy, you know. I'm happy. Christ. It's strange. I don't know if I'm coming or going at the moment. That's what I mean. How can you make a decision like this? It affects not only your life, but other people's as well when you're in this kind of state. Dale, I just need your support on this one. I can't. <laughs> it's too big a risk. But Dale, you take more risks than anyone. Please. He disappeared and I feel anger. Angry because I've been left on my... 
Would you? <laughs> Have some more cake, Dale. It's good for you. You always trying to make me fat, Mum. Come on, son. A few pounds never hurt anyone. Mike, tell Dale about that new project you're running for the Sunday school children. Oh, uh, Dale won't be interested in that. <laughs> You're right there, Mike. Dale, don't be so rude. You could take a leaf out of Mike's book, do some sort of service for other people. I do, Mum. You know I do. For heaven's sake, don't talk about that filth you get up to round this table. No, it's not filth. You'd be surprised. A lot of my clients are intelligent, respectful people. Look, the job's been around for years. You know it has. Ever since money's been exchanged for goods. Prevents sex crimes, prevents people having affairs. It allows people the opportunity to let off a little bit of steam, let go of themselves. I do provide a service, Mum. I help people out. Mike, tell him. Dale. You know what, Mike? A lot of my clients are just like you. Quiet, unmarried, who oh, when they're not... God's sake! Coming home provokes all kinds of emotions in me. Mum's pulled through. She's found a safe bet in Mike. Not the funniest man in the room. However, his gentle, passive nature is worlds apart from what she did have. I don't think she's altogether happy with her lot. But she's no longer scared. We don't really talk about the past. I think she hopes I was too young and don't remember. But I do. As if it was yesterday. I remember the broken crockery and the chunks of hair on the floor. Anyhow, now is not the time. Hey, this is Thames FM. I'm Jim Allen, and I'll be with you for the next couple of hours to listen to some wonderful, smooth jazz. Let's get going. <laughs> You look pretty in pink. Mm. Not. So any trade in here tonight? Just Richard Gear over there. He's been coming in the last couple of nights. He never talks though, he just stares at me. want what you can't have. What is it with you and people that are in loving relationships? Would you still marry someone if you weren't 100% sure? I take it we're not talking about them over there, are we? So how are the delightful duo that are Raj and Veena? I really don't know why you bother with them. Okay, he's good looking, he's got lots of money, a great career, and is straight with an air of maybe about him. I don't see why you waste your time. I don't expect you to like him, do I? Tell me, what would you do? I need to know. A good friend of yours, right, was about to make a big mistake. I'd stop him and say, before you do something you regret, have you ever considered it's never going to happen. He's straight. He's out right now with his fiance while you're stuck in a faggot's bar, clinching your mobile phone, waiting for your next punter to call. We're talking about him, not me. We're talking about friends about to make big mistakes. You're lecturing me about how to run my life when you're running to the loo every five minutes to put that crap up your nose. Get a life and get the hell out of mine.
one sniff at the truth and you go running. A few sniffs of Charlie and you're a dick. I'm going to give you five seconds to get out of my face before I deck you. I'm going nowhere. Just like a fabricated relationship. It's not fabricated. Two. You're pathetic. Three. You can't even stand up straight, so how the hell are you going to date straight? Four. You're just a cum-guzzling whore. Oi. Wind your necks then, ladies. Fuck off! So, Dale, have you been safer this month? I've been looking both sides of the road before crossing it, that's what you mean. This is no laughing matter. If you don't start taking more responsibility for your actions, then... Look, I'm here, aren't I? And before you ask, about 40 in the last couple of months, and yes, I've always worn my anorak, even though I feel like a bloody train spotter. And orally? I don't dress up for oral. OK, I see. Well, you've had your hepatitis B jabs. Yeah, I just need a booster. OK, we can do that today. I'll take your routine swabs. Do you feel that you need to have another HIV test? No, I've been very careful with all that. Good. OK, if you stand up and drop your trousers. This won't hurt. OK. Now, I've had swabs in the past, but here's one nurse who is clearly out to inflict pain on all those people who've got a sex life. The way she sticks that bud into my barrel, then twists, turns and scrapes it. I mean, look at the expression on her face. She loves it. Probably the closest she ever gets to handling meat. Imagine having to go to work to get your end away. Then again, who am I to talk? What is it about this place? Look at all the bland faces. I don't get it. Come on, we're the lucky ones who pick up. So, we pick up a few extras along the way, but nothing that the nurse can't clear. You have gonorrhea in your throat. That old chestnut. Why is it always me? Am I more prone to getting this than everyone else? Well, if you're more promiscuous, then of course it increases your chances. Maybe time to rethink about dressing up for the occasion. It was in the throat, not down there. Well, we haven't detected anything down there, but that's not to say there's no infection. Just take someone to kiss you and travel south, and you do the maths. OK, so what is it? Three tablets a day for a week? Yes, and no sex for a week. And also you need to get in touch with people that you've had relations with so that they can get tested. Up for a bit of overtime, eh? Yes. I love dealing with pricks all day. Can you believe it? No sex for a week. I suppose my social life and my income out of the window. Oh, and I can't drink either. Damn, I feel more fat now than I did when I was having sex. Uh, I think that'll do you some good. Use the time to think about what you really want from life. Oh, God, don't you get all serious on me as well. This is Vina, is it? This isn't about Vina. It's about you. You're almost 30 and you're still out there playing games. What do you really want from life? Where are you going to end up? You must have dreams, desires, like everyone else. I do. But I'm not afraid of mine.
What is it you're afraid of? Come on, Raj. Step into the unknown. Feel what it's like. When I fall, I'll feel every bone shatter, crack and smash into a thousand pieces. And you know what? I'll enjoy every moment. What is it you're afraid of? I... I didn't know how to tell you this. I've been bottling it up. I really need your help on this one. I'm bringing the wedding forward. What? There's been a cancellation next month, and I know it's impulsive, and <laughs> I'm scared stiff, but I... Are you mad? The last time we spoke, you, you didn't even know what was happening. Why would you do something like that? Listen to me, Raj. If you do this, you're gonna get yourself in one hell of a mess. They'll just... Uh, just write the fucking speech. This is Gavin Riley. That was the Cherry Storms, Julia. That'll be playing later on today and throughout the day, so stay tuned with us, and particularly with me, Gavin Riley. Yes, sir. It will be, sir. Listen, Raj, I've had a think. It'd be good to get to know Vina a little bit better than I do, you know? Really? Wow. That's great. That would mean a lot to me. Thank you. Well, it's only right I get to know what all the fuss is about, isn't it? So when are you both free? Well, um, we're not around for the next couple of weeks, but we're off tomorrow. OK, well, Sean's coming around for dinner tomorrow, so why don't you join us? <laughs> you cook. That'll be a first. I think I might... Oh, Raj, I've got someone on the other line. Six o'clock tomorrow, yeah? Yeah, sure, great. I will let Vina know. Looking forward to it. All right, bye. Hello, Zach speaking. Are those your real pictures? Yes, they are indeed. How many inches and are you cut? Nine inches and uncut. That works for me. Can I tell your name? Dominic. You say you do role play. Do you have a school uniform? Yes, I do, Dominic. Can you bring a sexy friend around midday tomorrow? Of course. I've got a nice Brazilian guy who can assist. It's going to be double, though, Dominic. OK. See you tomorrow. Fine. I can see some grime on that toilet seat. What are you paying me for, eh? Sort it out! OK, sir. Sorry, sir. I can't hear you, boy. I said OK, sir. Sorry, sir. Oh. Put your glasses back on so you can see what you're doing. Yes, sir. Thanks, sir. Thanks, Dale. And uh, here's an extra 50. You were definitely more into it this evening. See you, Pete. Oh, and um, try not to clean up too much this week, OK? Zach. Hi, Dominic. Good to meet you. 
Listen, I'm sorry about the uh, Brazilian guy, but I'm sure you'll find the job will be done to your satisfaction. Come in. So, Charlie, you enjoying school? Oh, yes. I'm really enjoying it, actually. I just love socialising. And we have an art department to die for. Sex education was kind of fun today, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, but I know all of that anyhow. How are things with your girlfriend? My girlfriend? Aren't we doing gay role play? Oh, my girlfriend. She's just fabulous. Fabulous? Bodge up. Um, my bitch. We make out at least five times a day. Really? What do you do to her? Tell me I've never done it with a girl. Well, I take out her titties. And I give him a rub and a shake and a squeeze. And that makes it purr. Wow. That sounds hot. Then what do you do? Um, well, I, uh... I part her legs. And I give her a poke with my little finger. Little finger? I poke and I prod and I slap and I kiss. And I lick and I sip from her. You what? You take a sip from her? Zach, this just isn't working for me. You know, actually, I'm running late for my cookery exam. I really should go. Sorry, Dale, I did try. I'm just waiting. So, Dale, anyone else? You ever been with a guy before? Well, I haven't been with a guy before, but I'm getting hard just thinking about it. I'd better take a closer look. Now a survey says over 60% of gay boys have had a crush on their best friends. What do we all think about that? Wow. Well, most boys grow into men and realise it's never going to happen. Three, two, one, and we're back in the classroom. You know what, miss? Your teaching method sucks. <laughs> Sorry, well, excuse me everyone while I go and powder my cute little nose. Do you really think he has a thing for you? Oh, Sean. 
Oh, yeah, I've known it for years. Sounds like one of those wives you wake up next to after a few years of marriage and think, I can't stand the smell of it, let alone the look of it. Well, we are not having one of those marriages. My wine, anyone? It's the last bottle. And as my dear friend Christine says, it's not over till it's finished. That's right. Dale, you were saying that if you really love someone, you'd shout it out for the whole world to hear. Darling, you're nearly 30, so go on, shout it out. There's only four of us here. Go fuck yourself. If it was a choice of fucking myself or getting fucked for money, I'd go it alone any day. You go it alone, I don't care. You have no idea how crap you make people feel sometimes, do you? What you fail to understand is rejection hurts, and I've had it all my life. But you, you get one little hint of it, and you manipulate it, and you make it everybody else's problem so you don't have to face the truth. So goddamn weak. It's not how loud you shout. Or how hard you hit. If you want to be heard, speak the truth. I'll check on him. Well, that's not the way you planned this evening, was it? Go away, then. I'm really not in the mood. Didn't you call this dinner party to get to know me before I marry your best friend? So, what do you want to ask? You're really not interested, are you, Dale? Do you realise how much you've hurt your friend? Sean, wait. Can you stop? Sean. Raj, stop playing the martyr. I've just about had it up to here with you and your perfect little life. You don't know the first thing about my life. Really? I have to listen to Radio Dale with its 24-hour news bulletins on the Raj and Veena show. Well, I can't help that. Look, you really shouldn't let things get you like this. How does it feel to be that perfect? To be that attractive and needed? I want to know. Tell me. Come on, stop being silly. Just get away from me. Do you have any idea how today felt for me? He'll be all right in a couple of days. Why didn't you tell him you were bitching about me and Raj and not him? What are you talking about? Like a wife you can't bear the smell of or look of. Dale, I work with children all day. I'm not stupid. Give me some credit, Dale. You're in love with Raj. Vina looks like the cat that's got the cream. She has that want for you. And then I look over at Dale and he's also looking at you. Takes me a microphone and six inch heels and a well rehearsed routine to be heard. Oh God, I don't even know why they're listening to you because your conversations are just so incredibly dull. <laughs> Don't hold back. Don't worry about me. Why does it always take a woman to say it the way it is? I'm getting...
getting married in two weeks. <sighs> we need to sort out this inconvenience. Inconvenience? You're unbelievable. Have you got any idea how it feels to love someone so much that they're in your every thought? The pain you feel, the desire uh, you feel, when you're right up close to them, how uh, it consumes you, how it burns uh, inside you. The more you try to ignore it, the more pain you feel, the more it hurts, the more it makes you sick! Uh, You won the battle, Vina. You've got him. But I know how it works. You two will get married. We'll have a few more awkward dinner parties. And then you'll have children and go, and go into some weird family mode and project all your shit onto them. I hope it works out for you, I really do. Hello? Yeah, it is. No, I haven't, but go ahead. You know, once, I was in the supermarket, and I saw this man exchanging bread. Now I had nuts on the crust. His partner had an allergy. He took time to notice. He looked out for him. You have people looking out for you, don't you? I wish. That man stayed around for more than five minutes in my life. And why the hell should they? Just look at me. I'm not like everyone else. That's why I started painting my face. Give people something a little bit more interesting to look at. Now I just do it to hide. You have many qualities. You just hide them well. If you showed people the real you more often, you may just surprise yourself. Now I know why people listen to you. You make a lot of sense when you're not being so dull. <laughs> Now let me look at your face. I wouldn't do that. I'm sorry. I had no idea you... Not many people do. Thank you for noticing. Del, what's happened? Fuck. What has happened? That guy who was murdered on the Heath. It's my mate. Ricardo. Oh my God. Losing everyone. Oh, fuck. No, you're not. What? Look, you've got two great friends in your life. You're not losing them. God, tell if anything. You're going to have Raj all to yourself very soon. I don't get you. You've been sitting round that dinner table for the last two and a half hours talking to Raj about marriage. And now you're leaving him. It's 
It's not through choice. Why not? I have a tumour. into my spinal column. And I've been given a few months. <laughs> Can you believe that? A few months. <laughs> I don't believe it. I'm marrying him. But you're, you're going to have him. <sighs> Do you know, I love him so much. I love him more than anything. But I can't give him what he wants. <sighs> you know what Raj is like. Puts on a brave face and smiles and pretends everything's okay but he is being ripped apart on the inside I can see it in his eyes I even hear him crying sometimes <laughs> who needs you I need you to promise me you'll always be there for him. Counting on me. Counting on you. Police are continuing with a murder inquiry in Blackheath in London after a man was found killed yesterday. Ricardo Nunes, aged 27, was stabbed eight times in a spot described by police as being notorious with gay men. In an emotional appeal for witnesses, Ricardo's father described his son as being a friendly, loving man who wore his heart on his sleeve and always saw the best in people. Cheer up, kiddo. Might never happen. It already has. What's worse, it seems to keep on happening. What can I get you, Mr. Gear? Nah, you're all right. Let me get you something. 
would you like? Do you know what I'd really like? Happy ending. Just like in Pretty Woman, where Richard takes Julia away from a messed up world, her friends, a job, everything. But this isn't a movie, and you certainly aren't Richard Gere. Well, my name is Richard. Then we're halfway there, then. I'd like a vodka and tonic, thanks. How about joining me later for a drink? Don't take pity on me. I'm not. This fairy spreads her wings at 7.30. Yeah? Right. Could you get to my place for... Oh, let's see. 11 o'clock? 11? Steady on, love. I'm not that kind of girl. Oh, trust me. I'm not that kind of guy. It never rains, but it flippin' pours. How's my gorgeous boy today, then? He's probably getting ready for his big day. How are you? Well, you know, self-centered, cruel, upset, trying desperately to say sorry. Hey, that's not the Dale I love. Will love to hate. <laughs> Don't go soft on me now, princess. Flowers, I mean, come on, whatever happened to good old fashioned snow in a bag? Well, they're not for you, are they? They're for me, I heard. I'm sorry to hear about Ricardo. I never met him, but from what you told me, he certainly lived life to the full. Are you okay? Yeah. I'm gonna place these on the spot. Where it happened. You be careful. The Heath is not the safest place to go at the moment. If you like, I'll come with you. Thanks. We'll go after work. I've got a couple of hours spare before my date. Before your what? Seems somebody doesn't find me unbearable to look at. It's okay. Raj saw through your mind games. He was really good to me last night. He's not such a dick. I know, I had a good chat with Veena as well. Mm. Perhaps they make the perfect match after all. You really should think about your speech. One step ahead. I wrote it and emailed it across to you. God. Let me know if it's too much, will you? There aren't many flowers. He wasn't exactly Lady Di, was he? Just another gay attack, I suppose. To think, he came to this country to make a better life for himself. Poor sod. Hmm. We never met, yet somehow I feel connected. You were one of us, and we're taken from this world simply for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. May you rest in peace. Mm. Now I bet you wish you'd practice safe sex. <sighs> Sick bastard. <sighs> I can't believe they're still coming here. Well, What's it going to take? Now the press have got hold of it, it's going to be a playground for married men, isn't it? Mm. What time's your date? You're not. Be rude not to, wouldn't it? Go on, please yourself like you always do. I will. Oh, and Sean, good luck. Go to hell, Dale. I just don't get it. How would anyone willingly go out on a date with you? 
You know, when I used to take you to school, they used to do me for littering. Was that the same day that you stuck your face out the car window and got arrested for mooning? It's just a few drinks. Oh, God, you should see him. He's so handsome. Distinguished. Silver hair. Just like Richard Gere. Well, we know what he likes to get up to in his spare time. What? He puts tins of ham inside himself. You what? Where'd you hear that from? When you and Dale were talking one night. I was walking past your room, so... <sighs> we said hamsters. I can't believe you were eavesdropping. You were so nosy. I wouldn't have to eavesdrop if you didn't close the door and whisper. I can't win. If I show no interest, you ram it down my throat. What you need is a good man and you could find something less intoxicating to ram down your throat. I can't work that one out. It's over my head. I mean, you need a good dick. Oh, well, I have you, dear. So, tell me more about the silver fox. Well, there's not much to tell. He's uh, mysterious with an air of authority. What's he do? Hopefully, everything. I blame Dustin Hoffman. What for? For making cocks in frocks fashionable. What do you mean? Tootsie! Christine. Oh, God, that was another video I bought for you. Sean? Mm? Don't feel you've got to rush home tonight. Don't go reading my diary again. You didn't even put it back in the right place the last time. Well, you got no worries there, love. You didn't even make it through January. It's hardly a good read. I think you're better off sticking with paints than pens. Don't set fire to yourself in bed tonight, sweetie. Don't take your clothes off in bed tonight. Not if you want a second day. I can't believe out of 10,000 sperms, you were the quickest... I can't believe that when you appeared on the family tree, nobody cut it down. Andy. Right. Ricardo, he's, uh, he's no longer... He doesn't do this anymore, Andy. Yeah. OK, I can do one-on-one. -on -one. Been gagged loads of times. Rape's okay, but it'll cost you double, yeah? Okay. I'll be in the sauna in 20 minutes. Of course. Wouldn't want to upset the wife, would we? All right. Have some wine. Calm yeah. the nerves. That'd be lovely. Yeah. But I've got to be honest, I'm really not that nervous. Well, I was actually referring to mine. I'm no harm to anyone. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you do seem a little tense. But it's been a while since you've uh, had a lady in your company. <laughs> Indeed it has. Mm -hmm. So, Richard, tell me a little about yourself. Where do I start? As Dame Julie says. Yeah. I start at the very beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Mister, you're a fast learner. A man after my own heart. Oh, I think that your opinion of me may change. I've done some really bad things. But I want you to know me. The real me. You see, for years I never knew myself. I was so confused. I felt so lonely. And the friends I had are like the friends you have. And back then it was just me. There was no escape from what I was. Do you have secrets? Of course. Well, I'm not talking about little secrets that you can have with your friends. I'm talking about life-changing secrets. I've done things I'm so ashamed of. I bet you have no idea what it does to someone 
knowing that he single-handedly destroyed a family. Ah, oh, the guilt that I feel inside. I just can't keep it to myself anymore. I've got to write myself. I see a lot of me in you. But you have such a, an amazing confidence. And when you wear your heart on your sleeve, but you display yourself with such vivid colours. And how did you stay so strong? <laughs> I bet you have no idea of the effect you have on other people's lives. You love your family, don't you? Well, we all have to uh, make do with our lot. It's no big deal. Everyone's got crosses to bear. So if you were taken from your family, that would be no big deal. <laughs> now listen here, kiddo. You have to realise that not everything is always as it seems. Yeah, shit happens. But we have complete control to change our lives. Look... This is all getting a little too Baby Jane for me. I think I really need You're to... You're not going anywhere. Not until I do what I have to do. Years ago, people were less understanding of my kind. You couldn't get away with those colours. My world was a much darker place. Rainbow may be shining on the window, but inside the lights aren't always on. Look, Richard, you're a lovely guy and all, but we all got our scars. But I was looking for something a little lighter tonight. My wife tried to understand my needs. But how could she accept me for what I was? I made a life hell. I brought her down. Couldn't imagine you bringing anyone down. Well, I left her on her own late at night while I went out hunting for gay men. I was an animal. I just took them. Didn't even know their names. I became addicted. Well, you know what it's like to be an addict, don't you, Sean? <sighs> I only felt complete when I was out there in the danger zone. And knowing that I'd eventually get caught just added to my excitement. And then I did get caught. And only then, I knew I'd fucked up. How do you mean? I was screwing with gay men. It cost me everything. My family. Just a pet name. First date I've had in months. Well, if it's any consolation, I never said it was a date. And like I said, I've made some terrible mistakes. But just so that you know, what I dream of yours, you know, of a happy ending. Well, I want that too.
was the happiest moment of my life. Fantasies are a funny thing. When I'm not having them, I'm cashing in on them. I've mastered this art form. I'm a pro, but not everyone understands the fine line between reality and fantasy. You hear all the time of rapists, paedophiles and murderers. I've flirted with these intruders, but never been seduced. Thought I was indestructible. Look at him. Wearing Ricardo's bracelet like some kind of trophy. Knife looks sharp. I thought it was only children that use knives. What led him to this? His hatred for gays? Or is it self-loathing? and rejecting of what he really is. I guess this is gonna work. He's a pro. Has immaculate timing. It's the build up and the suspense that gets us in such a state. I wonder how long he kept Ricardo waiting. Guess I'll be able to ask him soon. Can you guess where he's stabbing me? Listen. Let your imagination run wild. Imagine how it feels. God, it's important to feel. On an occasion like today, there are no words to be used to ease the pain. Before the death of my friend, I asked him to be my best man. He was unable to fulfill that role. But thanks to our friend Sean, I have the speech that he wrote. Oddly enough, nothing could be more fitting today. And I'd like to share his words with you. My best friend. We have known each other for a lifetime, and my heart is filled with so much love for you. I, I know I'm not the only one here today that feels that way. There have been many times when I have questioned this love. <laughs> Where it comes from, it makes me act irrationally and sometimes selfish but you know what it doesn't matter where it comes from it's more important to know that my love for you is ongoing from today you'll be living a new life surrounded by loved ones recently we had a heart-to-heart -heart discussing venturing into the unknown and allowing ourselves to feel. Well, well, I have been doing a lot of this lately and I felt every bone shatter, crack and smash into a thousand pieces. I embraced every moment I was feeling. Thank you so much for letting me feel. To my amazement, it did not hurt as you were my safety net. 
So go embrace this new beginning and make the most of every single second as I now realize how precious life is. You have my blessing and love always, Dale. Not a bad turnout. You know, I often used to fantasize about how I was going to go and who would be mourning for me. Selfish, I know, but doesn't everyone at some point? I mean, look at their faces. Fina. She's there supporting Raj, but clearly mourning her own funeral. Poor cow. Pete. Sweet. Crazy Pete. I was more than a game to you. I was not unique in my offering. You'll find someone else to fill my role. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Este Applauda. My friend, Sean. I'm going to miss you. Your honesty, comedy, colours, all your qualities. They'll stay with me. Christine, you face the uncertainty that one day Sean will no longer be by your side. Your past still controls your present. You need to be honest with Sean. Not discussing things allows your past to haunt you for the rest of your life. I remember the joy in Mum's face when Dad got her this beautiful set for their anniversary. as mum screams, helpless, desperate, sickening. I shouted with every bit of feeling I had. That's when I felt his hands around my throat. Six years old and gasping for air. Where does this hatred come from? What creates a monster? I pulled the kitchen knife that was on the sideboard and plunged it into his stomach. He stared at me. over. I must have been a constant reminder of the man who broke your spirit. You didn't like all the choices I made, but as you know I needed to be strong. Next time I see you I'm going to hold you so tight and tell you everything's going to be okay. What did you expect? To see me covered in blood, murdered by Andy? Please, he can barely perform a rape. Me and my overactive imagination, humouring myself. I'm still narrating my story, bringing you into my world, helping you escape yours. Do you escape much? 
like it when you do. Do you need a little support and guidance? Well, if you do, I know a good guide. You'd love it. It'd be safe, because as 